SpaceX Starlink versus China's satellite internet. Which one's faster? Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Normally we're talking about space, SpaceX, Starlink, Linux, AI, all kinds of good stuff. Today is going to be a SpaceX, Starlink, and Chinese internet. An alternative, which one's faster? In the last couple of days, I've been reading a few articles about this Chinese breakthrough with their broadband coming from satellites being extremely fast, up to a gigabit fast, something that SpaceX Starlink has been talking about, but has not hit as of yet. Supposedly, the Chinese have already done it. The story gets a little bit deeper, so I want to get into it with you guys. So if you're reading some of these articles, also, hopefully what I tell you today, you will get more, let's say, a better grasp on what's going on. And don't take everything that you read or I should say, take everything that you read with a grain of salt, because some of this stuff is just out there and they say things that just don't make sense. Anyways, we're going to get into this together today. I'll give you my commentary, but more importantly, I want to hear from you. What do you think about this down below in the comment area? If you don't want to put something down there because you're shy, a lot of people are shy. That's OK. Put an emoji down there. That would help out the channel a lot. At least YouTube will say, yeah, they actually listened to it. They watched it. That's good. <laughs> so anyways, if you don't want to put something down there, a comment, just put an emoji. That'll help. Before I jump into this article, I want to say we are still in Europe. This is the last day by tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be like a travel day. But then the following day, I will be back in the studio. So you'll start seeing a little bit more of the norm videos in comparison to this sitting in my stateroom on a cruise. So we've been cruising through Europe. We've gone through Italy and Sicily and the Greek islands, and it's just been absolutely gorgeous. It's been kind of like a workcation, um, a little bit of work, a little bit of vacation all together rolled up into one. So it's been a lot of fun. And at the beginning and at the end of every one of my videos for the last 17 plus videos, you'll see some of my footage that I've captured once again in Italy or in Greece or one of the islands somewhere. Today we were in Florence. Florence is one of those places that I believe that you need at least a week or so. Some of the islands, the Greek islands, for example, they're smaller, they're more compact, and you can see a lot in a day. But Florence, the capital, um, it is pretty massive. And if you want to go to the outskirts and see everything, it would I would say a week. You would need at least a week to 10 days to be able to do it effectively not an excursion um, off of a cruise. There's just simply not enough time. But what we did see was beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. So anyways, the article starts out by saying, China's laser satellite blast past SpaceX Starlink. Can it fix the lag? A Chinese satellite soaring at 36,000 kilometers above Earth just hit one gigabit per second data speed with a laser weaker than a flashlight. I believe it's like two watts, which is kind of crazy. Absolutely destroying SpaceX's 100 to 250 megabits per second. This was reported on June 23rd, 2025 by Newsweek and the South Chinese Morning Post. This breakthrough has tech fans and geopolitic buffs buzzing, with many news sites calling it a shot across the bow in the US versus China tech race. But its geostationary orbit, or GEO, provides it with a sluggish 240 milliseconds latency, far behind SpaceX Starlink's snappy 20 to 50 milliseconds, making it a non-starter for gaming and video conference calling. Can China cut this lag? How? And by how much? Why the lag? Distance is the culprit. Latency boils down to travel distance. SpaceX Starlink 7,900 plus satellites orbiting at about 530 kilometers zip signals to Earth and back in about 10 milliseconds, hitting 20 to 50 milliseconds total with processing. China's geostationary satellites at 36,000 kilometers faces a minimum of 240 milliseconds round trip delay due to the speed of light. 60 times farther, 60 times farther. Once again, SpaceX Starlink is at 530 kilometers. The Chinese satellites are at 36,530 compared to 36,000 kilometers. Much, much 
further away. It's been duly noted that this tanks real-time applications like Zoom or online gaming. Atmospheric turbulence, which scatters laser signals, add more delay unless the tech is pinpoint precise. Slashing the lag, China's tech toolkit. China does have a few tricks up its sleeve. Go low with LEO. Shifting to low Earth orbit or 350 to 1200 kilometers could cut signal travel to 5 to 10 milliseconds. China's Jinlin 1 constellation with 117 LEO satellites plans to hit 300 by 2027. Their adaptive optics to focus lasers and mode diversities to catch scattered signals could keep that one gigabit per second speed with SpaceX Starlink-like latency. That would be interesting. Laser crosslinks. SpaceX Starlink's inter-satellite laser links skip ground stations, cutting latency by up to 50%. China's laser Starcom hits 400 gigabits per second in space, tested in March of 2025. Using this in LEO could bypass slow terrestrial networks, trimming down another 5 to 10 milliseconds. Ground Station Boost The Jinlin 1's mobile truck mounted station dodges bad weather. More stations near users and sharper algorithms could shave another 5 to 15 milliseconds off processing. Caching and compression. Local data storage and packet compression could cut 10 to 20 milliseconds for browsing or streaming. How low can it go? In LEO, signal travel could drop to 5 to 10 milliseconds, plus 10 to 15 milliseconds for processing, hitting 15 to 25 millisecond, matching SpaceX Starlink's 20 milliseconds. Crosslinks and ground station tweaks might trim another 5 to 10 milliseconds. Geostationary satellites, however, are stuck above 200 milliseconds due to physics. Absolutely, you cannot break the speed of light. It is what it is. The Space Internet Showdown awaits. This laser-powered leap isn't just about speed. It's a signal that China's gunning for SpaceX Starlink's crown. If they shift to LEO, perfect their laser crosslinks, and optimize ground stations, they could deliver blazing fast 1 gigabit per second internet with latency around 15 milliseconds or lower, rivaling SpaceX Starlink's grip on global connectivity. So the race is on and the stakes are high, literally. So I think that this is very interesting. And a lot of people wrote to me and said, listen, I need to do a story about this. And the reason being is a lot of people, when they first read this, it seemed like for some reason that SpaceX Starlink is kind of being outdone by China because of this new technology that they have. And yes, they do have technology that is sending data from a geostationary satellite at 36,000 kilometers to Earth with one gigabit speeds. Yes, they can do that. But the problem is, is latency. And what people don't understand, many people don't understand, is latency is everything. You can have as much speed as you want, but if your latency is just extremely slow, well, there's a lot of things you can't do. You can't game with it. Video conference calls are just horrible. Anything that needs to be real time, you cannot do. You need to have something that has extremely low latency. That's why Elon Musk has been gunning for sub 20 milliseconds. That's why he does gaming videos. Some people don't know this, but he's a gamer. He does gaming videos using SpaceX Starlink to show how low that latency can go. And it is getting really, really good. Whereas a lot of you guys out there that do have SpaceX Starlink are seeing anywhere from about 30, 40, 50 milliseconds in my neck of the woods, I've actually seen 14.5 milliseconds. That is incredibly fast. That is as fast as any of our copper providers. When you go down to fiber, you're going to see either one millisecond to about five, six milliseconds. So obviously fiber is going to be quicker. But when it comes to everything else out there, anything sub 20 milliseconds is exceptional.
And what he has said, he being Elon Musk, is once those version three satellites are in orbit, once Starship stops blowing up, like I always say, well, we're going to see sub 20 milliseconds latency and we're going to see gigabit speeds. You're going to pay a little bit, a good price for those gigabit speeds. It's going to be commercial at first, but then it's going to be for everyone. You might have to pay up a little bit more, or maybe you won't. It really depends on how massive this thing will grow once Starship is online and they can deliver 100, 150, maybe even 200 satellites every time they launch a Starship. And remember, those satellites are 20 times the capacity of one of the current version two mini satellites. That means when they do put into orbit 100 of those version threes, it's the equivalent to 2000 of the current version two minis. So it's a massive difference, massive. So like I said at the beginning of the video, this story is more about me giving you all of the facts and cutting through some of the fat, some of the nonsense, some of the BS that you'll read when you're going through this and you're taking a look at your news feed and all of a sudden you'll see that China is just blowing SpaceX Starlink out of the water with this gigabit speeds. And the answer to that is kind of no. <laughs> that is not the case. The other thing you need to understand too is for them to actually make this work, they had to have a mobile receiver, a mobile ground station that would receive the signal. Why did they need that? They needed that to make sure that the atmospheric conditions were absolutely pristine at that location. If it was a thunderstorm going on at that location, they would not see those speeds. And the reason being is when you're using a laser in comparison to RF or radio frequency, lasers, let's just say shatter or scatter when they hit all of those water molecules. So it's hard to be able to keep a real sharp pinpoint laser from just breaking apart as it's going through that type of situation. So laser technology, while yes, it is really effective on orbit, basically shooting a laser from satellite to satellite to satellite in zero gravity, no atmosphere, no water molecules, everything pristine, it's actually faster than light going through a fiber optic cable. That said, when you're trying to connect a satellite to ground using a two watt laser, well, it's not that easy. And I just don't see this being a viable option in the future because of this reason. And I haven't seen that anywhere before. I just want to tell you about it. So once again, when you're reading about this stuff, you kind of get a, just a clearer understanding of what's going on, what they can actually do and what they can't do. Like they said in this article, you cannot go faster than the speed of light, meaning that 240 milliseconds is 240 milliseconds. You can't get any faster than that at the speed of light from 36,000 kilometers. So that's it. You cannot go any quicker. You have to take all of this stuff with a grain of salt. Some of this stuff is going to be viable. Some of it is not. Some can happen. Some can't happen. You cannot change physics. Physics is just simply what it is. That's why we say math is math. And when I do the math, I do it for you so that you know what can be and what can't be. And so you get an understanding of what is possible and what is not. Anyways, guys, I want to hear from you. What do you think about this down below? I want to hear from you. If you don't want to put something down there, because once again, eh, you're a little bit shy, put an emoji down there. That would be very helpful. And if you have not subscribed to the channel as of yet, consider doing so. If you enjoyed the video, throw it a thumbs up, click this notification button over here. So when I go live, when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you want more SpaceX Starlink content, I'll put a link over here. You'll find a whole bunch of helpful how to's tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And of course the why behind all of it. Check it out. About 510, 515 videos now just for you. Also, if you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thanks button down there. Click on that. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com. Once again, jchristina.com. Actually, you can go to forward slash shop. If there's some merch over there that you like, please pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, hopefully through SpaceX Starlink. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you guys. Why is there a ringing, a humming,
and other bullshit going on outside of this door. Why is there kids screaming? I think someone's doing jumping jacks, somersaults, banging on shit. There's metal clanking, and now there's a humming that sounds like it's water going through a pipe. Holy shit! Uh, I really have enjoyed this trip, but I tell you what, I'll just be really, really happy to get back to the studio.